Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and in this lesson I'm going to show you some other options that are available to create customized railing fabrication. So, in our first lesson on customization, when we opened up the customized dialog box, we took a look at how to choose dimensions to display for the various drawing routines that we have, and also how to customize the bill of material by turning off and on columns, setting column widths here, picking either an individual cut list for each assembly or unified cut list either just the parts without headings of the assemblies or having each assembly with a heading and then having the parts all assembled in a unified cut list that way. Okay, so the other big customization features that this program provides to you are to customize the actual materials that you use. And the first thing that you can customize is the pull down list itself. So here you can turn off items you don't use in various fabrications that you're dealing with. So like if you've got a in your gate program, if you don't use pipe, you can uncheck pipe or move it down to the bottom of the list by just clicking on that and just moving it down. Okay. So you can customize your pull down list for all your different materials. And then you notice here all these tabs for all the types of materials that are available here. Now, for instance, like for round, say for round bar, you can add a collection of round bars that you use in your business. So I could highlight an existing one, and that's what I suggest you do, and then just copy it, and then change this. So say this is going to be 3 eighths round, okay? 3 eighths round. So then you can put your unit cost and your unit weight. I'm just going to put something in here. Um, and then the diameter would be, and you have to use decimals for all this, 0.375. And now you see this OTD, OTV, and all these different coefficients. Well, we have this little gap nomenclature tab here. And OTD stands for post top distance. And ITD stands for picket top distance. Those are the two main ones you're going to use. And then there's IBD, which is picket bottom distance. So let me explain this briefly to you. So from the top of the top bar to the top of the post, say this was a two-inch extrusion and not a solid bar. And I wanted this post to go into that extrusion a quarter of an inch. Well, I would put the diameter of the member at two inches. And then I would put the OTD at 1.75, which means that from the top of the top bar to the top of the post, that distance will be an inch and three quarters, which means that the post is going into that top bar a quarter of an inch. And let's say that the picket goes in one inch. So it's a two inch outside diameter. The ITD, the picket top distance, would be one. So that when the program draws it, the picket will be one inch from the top of the top bar, which means it's one inch inside the extrusion. Now for IBD, the picket bottom distance, if I have it set for zero, then the picket butts to the bottom bar, and you weld it there. If you punch through, then you say a quarter of an inch, you put a minus 0.25, and this picket will go through, the, through that channel a quarter of an inch. Now if you want to put a bottom border and say it's five inches ab above, then you put the IBD at five and the pickets will stop five inches short of the bottom bar and then you can add a secondary bar. Well, we'll go through that step by step uh, uh, in a minute here and show you how all that works. So I'm just going to click OK here. And so the OTD for the quarter inch was a quarter. I want to make that point three seven five. Everything else is zero, so I'll leave that alone. Okay. One other coefficient is H. Let me show you that one real quickly. So I'll click on H is the distance of the bottom bar as it butts to the post. Now you set that coefficient with the post material. So say if you cope pipe rail and you're using inch and a quarter schedule 40 pipe. Well the and say you have a 3 8 cope. So what happens is the distance from the inside of the post to the inside of the post is one dimension. And that's where it would stop without any at changing the H coefficient because it would just butt to the post. But if you want to allow extra length for the coping, then you would take and put in the H box point minus 0.375, which means that this bottom bar will extend into that post three-eighths of an inch 
on either side to allow for coping. And you can do this, and you, and you would adjust the OTD at the top three three eighths of an inch less, so that the post goes into the top bar three eighths of an inch too, so you can cope the top of the post. So we'll show you how that works too. Okay. So, all right. So then I I just click OK, and I've added a new item to my customized material. So for square tube, if you've got an odd size square tube, you can create one. Very easy. Here's an inch and five eighths. Not too many of those around. So let's just look at that. I'll edit it. So it's inch and five eighths, and you'll see the thickness. You see the OTD is 1.625. The ITD is 1.625. Okay. And so uh, and our suggestion is that you copy items that are already in the cut list in order to do that. So I'm going to draw a railing and then I'm going to show you how you can modify the bottom bar to put in a bottom border on the railing. So I'm going to just click OK here and OK and go back to the horizontal rail. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on and import a template. Let's call it inch and a quarter tube rail. I'll click OK. And I'm just going to draw next and draw and pick a point and draw this railing. Okay. So let's say that I want to put a bottom border in here. And I can go in and I can stretch up these pickets, say, six inches. Put on ortho, I'll do it straight. And then do a real copy command and copy the bottom bar up and put that up there. Or I can set it up so that it automatically stops this picket six inches above the bottom bar. So let's take a look at what we have here for the bottom bar and uh, look down here on the cut list and it's an inch and a quarter square tube. So let's go and we're going to set, uh, we'll just set the distance there. So I go up here and I go to customize material selection. I pick square tube and I pick inch and a quarter and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to change it to 1 dash 1 slash 4 inch 6 offset. Let's call it that. Okay. Now, then I'm going to go up here to the IBD. The IBD is the picket this down here, the distance from the bottom bar to the bottom of the picket. I'm going to set that for 6 inches. Okay, so I'll go down here and change. Instead of being 0 where it butts now, over here, you see where it butts to it, I'm going to set that for 6, so it stops 6 inches short. And then Now, uh, when I click OK, I'm going to get a message saying either the size or description must be left blank. So I'm going to leave the size blank here. Delete that. I've got a description of what I want. Okay. So I click OK, and it adds, here it is on the list to make sure that the box is checked. It's at the bottom of the pull-down list. So I click OK, and then click OK. So now when I go back and draw this railing, I'll go back, do horizontal rail, I'll go next, it's already in there, and then my bottom rail, I'm going to go in and change that. I'm going to go down and change it to the inch and a quarter, six inch offset. Okay. And I need a secondary bottom rail there, so I'm going to use a uh, square tube. Let's see, square tube, an inch and a quarter. And the offset distance uh, will be an inch and a quarter less than six, which would make it what? I think this will work. We'll try it and see what happens. Let's just say 4.75 and see how this works. Okay, so I click OK. Uh, let me go back. Oh, check NA there. Okay. Then I click draw, pick a point. And now I have created, so I don't have, I have to increase the distance, the offset distance, because you see the pickets have stopped where I wanted them to stop, but the bottom bar is the secondary top rail offset is not set properly. So let's just measure that and see what, how much I got to add. So let me put on the snaps here. Let me do go linear from here to here. I need to add another inch and a quarter, so I should have just left it alone at six. So let me go back and we'll just erase this one. 
you notice I've checked the option where I am putting the rails on a unified cut list automatically over here. So I'm going to go back and click horizontal rail and click next and click on a secondary top rail and change the offset to 6. So it's and then click OK, click draw, pick a point, and now we have the new rail 2 here and now everything's fitting perfectly. So now I have my railing with a border at the bottom. You can do borders at the top too by adjusting the OTD, the distance from the top down, to handle the picket stopping short at the bottom. Now just to show you real quickly how the pipe rail looks, let me go in here. I have one already. It's called, let me import a template, and it is called Coped Pipe Rail. So I click OK, and I click Next, and you notice I have an inch and a quarter, Schedule 40, Coped Pipe is my material I've created. So I'm going to click Draw, and then pick a point. And then you see that there's a cope length that's extended. And to give it the look that I want, I can use the rail wipeout command that we have. I can go up here and just wipe that out. It makes it look like it's coped. Okay, kind of cool. All right, and then it's over here. We've got the pipe rail here with the cut list for that. You notice you're getting a grand total here now on this unified cut list. On the legacy you'll get a total for each railing as you go. So let's take a look at what we did with that pipe. So I'm going to go back to the customize material selection, go to the pipe tab, which is here, and go down to where it says inch and a quarter cope. So you notice that the diameter is 1.66 but the OTD I got 1.36 and the ITD is 1.56 because the butt's there. But you notice the H coefficient, minus 0.375, which means that that H, this H here at the bottom bar, is going into that post 3 eighths of an inch. Okay? Now, you can also, besides going with pipes and channels and rectangular tubes and all that, you can also do custom shapes. And let's just pick this one right here. So I'm going to edit this. So I've got a description. Unit cost, you know, wait, I can put that in there. Thick width. And then I have a block name. The block that I've got in here is the cross-section look of what this thing looks like. And then I have all my other coefficients in here, like so. Okay. Now, the blocks... You create a block just like you normally do, but you put it into, I'll show you where it goes. So if I go up here to my uh, right block, instead of putting it into the library folder or documents or something like that, we have a folder in our C drive. So if you go up here, go to C, and click on Fabcat Premium, Auto Rail, and you have a folder called blocks. And here you see, let's take a look at the, uh, give the thumbnails on this. You can see these are cross sections of blocks. Different ones have been made, okay? So the core glass is this one here. You see that we've got all kinds of custom shapes that are in our block library. That's where they go. Okay. And then it'll give you, then that's where you save them, and then they'll incorporate into the drawing. What they look like is like this. So let's go in and I'll do an import a template here. So I import a template. I'm going to pick glass panel rail. All right. And I go next. And you notice that the top rail is this and tube. It's got all these different customized shapes here for the bottom rail. So let's click okay let's go ahead and click draw. Let's see what this thing looks like when it's drawn. So I go in here 
there's my custom extrusion. Let me generate that, regenerate that. Custom extrusion here with a snap channel actually, so it's, it's made like a capping and channel. And then down here we have a bottom channel which is different to receive the glass. And we've told it that we wanted the glass to go in a certain distance down into the channel, just like you would a picket through a channel. And then the distance of the glass from the top. Here is the big two inch piece and then inside the little snap channel fits in between the posts. So you can see there's all kinds of different things you can do with, with the customization features that we have. So if you've got any other questions about this, feel free to give us a call at our 800 number that you see on the screen or email us. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.